أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we are at page 48 now on the 23rd council الحمد لله he's talking about contemplation right he's talking about contemplation Tafakkur, right? It's called concept. It's called tafakkur. My dear son, hear one more thing from me, and contemplate about it until you find salvation. This is a very important aspect of learning. All right, I'm going to give you some pillars of learning, some of the habits you should have, and these habits um was of course affected because of COVID. All right, one of the things you need to bear in mind, Imam Wazali mentioned this in his another book called Bidayatul Hidayah, which is the beginning of guidance. He mentioned about the pertinence, importance of establishing routines. And one of the most important routines that one should establish is actually the routines of seeking knowledge. All right? He started off by talking about importance of uh, having litanies, routinizing your litanies. You're weird. All right? What should I recite for the day? All right? Consistently every day. What is your weird for the morning? All right? What's your read for the day? How many istifar per day? How many pages of the Quran per day? And being consistent about it. Second to that is establishing your learning pattern to consistent. It's like school, like school is part of your schedule. If you as a student, there's no way, there's no way around it. It's part of your schedule. It's part of your system that you have to wake up every morning and you get to school by seven thirty, by seven twenty five, and then your day ends by one or two or some slightly more unfortunate ones. They finish at three four p.m. That is your day every day. Your mind is that. The same for religious knowledge. It is not something that you can decide if I want to come. No. If you can give so much for your everyday school, all right, which is important, all right, then all the more that that importance multiple fold, all right, should be the same for you in seeking something that also benefits you in the in the hereafter. You should routinize it. This was of course affected because of COVID, but now COVID has provided you with Zoom, all right, with Skype, and henceforth, then you should make it part of your schedule. Attend classes that you can set a, a seek to attend classes consistently. All right, not because you want to pass your time, because it is important. Because talabul elmi fauri datun ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. The 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 language, uh, the, the the seeking knowledge is obligatory upon a believer, whether it's male or or female. Okay, so first thing is that make sure that you you attend. So pick part part of your schedule, put it there. All right, that you should consistently attend religious classes. All right, for a podcast, all these are additional. These are additional side dishes. Your main course is a class. And how you know your class? A class is a class when you have a text. All right, you have a text and you have someone who is who can deliver the text. All right. So it, that is considered a class. It's like going to school. You have a textbook, you have a teacher. The same goes for religious classes. All right, you have a text that you can actually gauge your progress. So you have a text, all right, and have someone who can deliver the text. All right, and we have said in multiple lessons, in some lessons before this, how do you gauge that person is comp competent in presenting the text? Let look at the effect on yourself. All right, so that so put yourself so one even once at least once a week. All right, sit down and seriously seek knowledge. There are some knowledge where you actually sit on Zoom and you can sit back, laid back, but then there must be some knowledge where you actually sit down and you actually dedicatedly uh, commit your time to it in a disciplined manner. So one is to actually that you. You 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 uh, attend classes, religious classes at a consistent level. It's like it's like our our, our friends, all right. Uh, uh, some of my Christian friends they attend uh, Sunday school. They attend Bi Bible studies, all right. Mm, some some of my I have friends who when they attend Bible studies they put me to shame because oh despite their work schedule they will after work I'll go for my Bible studies, all right. And we have to have such com we have to have commitment have a commitment to learning our religion, okay. Second is to listen. When you attend, you listen. You can't be attending and not listening. All right. So listen is uh, the adab is to attend in presence and you listen and you pay attention to what is being taught. All right. So to listen. That's why he says here is to hear one more thing from me. Here, the third thing is to note to note to take down your notes. All right. Take down your notes. Note. Have a notebook and write down. 
Right. So this is this is uh, Sayyidina Ali Babi Talib says that those who attend who attend lessons, those who attend gatherings of knowledge, but they do not have writing material, it's like going to war without weapons. Alright. So when you are when you are when you are seeking knowledge, make sure that you have material to write. So you have a book, you have a text. So basically, you need three things. Alright. You need to have the text, the main text that is being shared. You need to have your notebook and you have to have a pen. Three things, and you go to a to a, to a, to a class of knowledge. Try to have that. Okay. Uh, that will fall into alright muta'allim the the learner saya nak rasulullah sallam says kun aliman aw muta'alliman alright be the learner if you cannot be learned be the learner so what is the what is the status of a learner alright what is the status of a learner the status of a learner is the one who actually has these three things he has the book he has the the writing material he has the pen he has the he has the book he has the pen of course, he has a teacher before him. Right? Muta'aliman. Aw mustami'an. What about those who attend? But they have no book. They have no main text. They just like to attend. Not, not, not bad. These are called mustami'an. So mustami'an is not whole. They listen. They are not taking on those. So some people usually, you see people in Moses. They just sit there. And they like to listen. Mustami'an. Ah, they like to. They, they listen. But they will never be, they are not of the same level as the one that is actually taking down notes. Profusely. Alright? So, Mustami'an. Aw Muhibban. Ah, Brother Irwan I, our favorite. Muhibbins. Aw Muhibban. The fourth level are the Muhibbins. You notice not? Muta'alim and the Muhibbin. Muta'alim is higher than the Muhibbin. Ah, Muhibbins are who? Muhibbins are the people who like Gada Sabda. They like the Ustaz. They like the Sheikh. But they do not commit themselves to taking down notes. Sometimes they attend. Sometimes they don't attend. They just occasionally attend. But they have a loving. Why is why are they fourth? Because when you talk about knowledge, all right, the one that is the mu'al muta'alim, the student of knowledge, the one who writes down. Within the student of knowledge is the muhibbin. Within the student of knowledge is the mustami. The student of knowledge is he is a lover. The student of knowledge is the listener. The learner, all right, the, the listener might not be the learner. I'm listening by not taking down notes. The lover might not be someone who can be a lover, but you might not be listening. Why? Sometimes you don't attend. Sometimes you skip classes. But you still love from afar. I don't come, but I still love my sheikh. Alright? But at the same time, you don't attend, you're still not taking down notes. So the one that's highest is muta'alim. The highest level is the muta'alim. The one that is actually the one that actually takes down notes. Because when you attend, you listen, and you take down notes, that shows that you love. So high level muta'al, muta'alim. If you want to be a good student of knowledge, right? Alright? Imam Ghazali also says this. You want to be a good student of knowledge. All this make sure that if you are a muta'alim, also add one more thing to it. Be of service to your teachers. Be of service to your teachers. Because some people they like to they like they like to they, they like to they like to learn. So they just learn. Lesson is over. They go home. But I know of people who becomes you know Sayyidina Anas bin Malik. Sayyidina Anas is the foremost companion. Anas bin Malik is the high is, is the best example of someone who is learned. But then he also serves the prophet. If you seek to serve, so I I know I know people, all right, when, when where they study, right, they offer themselves to be the helpers to their sheikh. So what do these people do? These people, they will have to, they will have to attend the classes. When the classes start, they will take down the notes. But before the class starts, they'll be the ones that are running around to set up the place. They're the ones who are running around to prepare the coffee. They are the ones who are running around to make sure the sound system is working. They are the ones who are running around and then when the class starts, they take down notes. But once the class is finished, they'll be the one with the, teach with the, with the teacher. All right, carrying the teacher's bag. They're the one with the teacher taking the same car. These people will learn more. Why? Because now do you have access to knowledge or right, you have access to knowledge that is beyond the classroom. You have access to knowledge before the classes start. You have knowledge, knowledge inside the car. This is Anas bin Malik. That's why the companions after the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. All right, who did they look for? Anas bin Malik and Sayyidina Aisha. Why? They have knowledge that's exclusive that we don't have. Why? The Prophet's household. All the, all the hadith about the Prophet's household comes from Aisha, comes from Anas bin Malik. Most of the hadith comes from there because they do not see the Prophet inside his own household. All right, as much as Anas bin Malik and Sayyidina Aisha does. So try to be of service. You get, you get, you get, you get closer to your to your teacher. Uh, if you want to get closer to your teacher, lah. 
All right. If you feel, oh no, I shall stay away. All right. I just want to learn. Okay, good for you. All right. Mm. All right. That's not the end of it. So you become the note taker. Fourth, ah, this is one of the mistakes we'll make. Some people, they like to take notes, but then the intention to take notes is, the, I tell you some, not a good habit of myself. Sometimes I take, I will take notes in general. In my classes, all I will take down notes. But at certain classes, I will take down notes because I need to stay awake. So last time, Shia Aman said, no, no, I'm going to get into trouble for this. He teaches Akida. Akida lesson is always on Saturdays, 2 p.m., after lunchtime. It's the heaviest lesson. Right? Akida is the, the theology, right? You study, with, oh, mashallah, heavy. And then you just say your nasi padang. Of course, in the morning, when you, before you, before you, in the morning, in the morning lessons, you say, I promise myself that I will not eat heavy for lunch so that I can attend Akida lessons with a clear mind. It's always easy to promise. It's like you in Ramadan says, I will go for iftar. Therefore, if I will not eat a lot of iftar, just eat uh, dates and drink milk. That's all you say. All right? Until your, until your mother spoils it for you and your wife spoils it for you. All right? So that's all you do. So after the uh, Akida class, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be struggling to stay awake. Fortunately, I find that on the people on my right and my left, they all have the same plight. All right? Uh, they all have the same suffering. So what do we do? I start from previous batches. Brother Iran was from previous batch of Shia Masan. I also say, oh, we also have the same problem. Alright, the problem of what? Not no Akida. The problem is not the Akida. The problem is staying awake for Akida. Our Akida is inshallah sound. But the problem is attending Akida classes. So what do we do? We actually, I for myself, some of them go on making coffee. They drink a lot of coffee. So Akida, during Akida class, you see the consum consumption of coffee is quite high. Alright, for me, it's take down notes. So I will just take down and take down. I do not even think about what I'm writing. I just, whatever, I become, I, it's not, I'm not take, I'm not note taking. I'm transcribing. So a share's lesson, instead of not thinking, I'm transcribing. Everyone, he says, I'll just write down. Why? Just to stay awake. Because Akida class is for two hours. It's from two to four. And if some, some people want to ask questions, it becomes 4, 30, it becomes 5. So you just take down and take down. And when the class ends, you just really just close. Oh, mashallah, I finished the class. Alhamdulillah, that's what I accomplished. Some of us, we attend classes, right? We take down notes. We take down and we take down notes. Do we actually go back and open up the book and read? What did I take down yesterday? So make sure that your note taking is not escapism. Add on to the notes. This is a best practice. Those of you who are going, you are in university, you are in secondary school, you are in college, you are in poly, wherever institution of learning. When you take down notes, make sure that when you finish, do not wait for two, three days or exam to read down notes. Go back home at night, the latest. Open up your notes, look, and then you see where, whether you understand. For a start, your handwriting. Can you read it, reread it again or not? All right, and then you try to understand, add on, highlight again, reread, apply. That's contemplation. That is contemplation. You do not just finish not taking any of that, you go, boy, oh, I have to take notes, and you share, you share, take the picture of notes. No, you have to think about the notes, absorb the notes. Imam 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 Shafi'i, he was in his when he was when he was he was when he was studying in when he was studying in Medina, when he was in a room, his room was filled of notes. Because he was writing down. Last time when they were writing, they were writing on, 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 on leaves, dead leaves and everything. So he was writing, writing, writing to the point where he has, enough, he has barely enough space to move about. He has only enough space to lie down, to rest. So he says, I will not leave this room until I've memorized and internalized all that I've written. So by the end of the day, all his notes are all, his room is clear already. And these are the memory of people of the past. Okay? Mm. Okay? And then, so one is, so I repeat, one is to make sure that you attend consistently. Second is for you to listen. Third is to th take no notes. Fourth is to contemplate. Fifth is to now think of a constructive action plan based on that you have learned. What will you do with this knowledge? Putting the knowledge into action. Uh, these are the five stages. Putting that knowledge into ac action. Is there a sixth stage? Sixth stage is a good one. It's the completion. What? One, two, three, four, five, six stage. Deliver. Six stage. Share. The best form of knowledge to share is one that you have acted upon. That you have thought through it, that you have acted upon. Then it becomes the most sound knowledge. But this stage is very is very heavy. Right? Can you imagine this is for, for example, if you attend once a week, this is what you have to do, you have to do once a week. The scholars of the path, they repeat these six process, these six steps for every second of lesson that they have. 
So if one day they study five, six lessons, six times six, 36 steps that they have to process to get to where they are. All right? Mm. If you were informed, so he gives another metaphor, and this is a method of Imam Ghazali, and this is a method Shama San used to tell us that if you're teaching to people, all right, use metaphors, not just metaphors, metaphors that are relevant to their times. All right? Nah. So don't, don't start with, imagine you're fishing. Fishing is not, it's not, it's not applicable to most people here. All right? If you are not a fisher, you're not a fishing type, then it doesn't apply to you. Right? That's why Shama talks about, he talks about trains and train stations. We can relate. Why? It's, it's something we see in Singapore. Okay? If you are informed that the Sultan was going to elect, select you for appointment as a minister, means what? Death. Know that in the course of this period, you will not engage in anything but improving your garments or body, your house or its furnishing, anything you thought the Sultan's eye will be cast upon. So if you say, all right, for example, the Sultan has chosen you to be a minister and he's, once he's, cho he's choosing you, he's inspecting you. So he's trying to say that when you and Allah invites you. When Allah invites you, invites you to be a possible candidate to enter paradise. Wallahu ya du'u ila dari salam. He calls you to be a possible candidate to paradise. How would you prepare yourself? You must make sure that every nook and corner, everything about yourself is addressed. Everything that's under your care. Alright? Mm. Now think about what I have indicated to you. For you are quick-witted. And a few words are sufficient for you. Uh, so he says, now you think about this. All right. You notice he doesn't have to tell his student, I'm talking about death. But that is understood. It is understood. So as a student, also as a bonus, bonus, as a student, it is good for you to be quick-witted. You have to be quick. Uh, a, a teacher, a teacher, the most treasure a student that is quick to capture something. Uh, that is most, they love it. All right. Mm. Ustaz, I'm quite slow. Uh. Ustaz, go slow, uh, Ustaz. If you are slow, good. Don't make yourself slower. So, if you know you're going to be slow, like myself, if you're going to be slow, make sure that you do not make yourself slower. Why? So, make sure that if you have classes, make sure you turn up in a fresher state. If you have classes, sit in front. Ah, if, you are know, if you know you're going to be slow, you have to work extra harder. Usually, you know, I tell you something. Some comfort for all of us. The slower students become the best teachers. I tell you, the slowest students can become the best teachers and the best students sometimes can be the worst teachers. Because the slower students, they know how painful, the slower students have awareness. Huh? All right? The slower students, they are aware of their inadequacies. Right? They will make sure that so they know, I will always be, I have to be on time. I have to be on time. I have to be early. Get the front seat because I, if I sit at the back, I can't hear, I can't see the gestures. I sit in front. Anything I can ask. I, must, I know that I cannot absorb, even in my current state of mind, I will need to be fresher. They will sleep early. They will wash their diet. And most importantly is that they know how difficult it is. So they will be working extra hard. They understand how difficult it is to get to understand something because they know they are slow. So one day when they become teachers and they see a slow student, they know, hey, presto, I know. I was there before. So sometimes you notice a student, that they, they get scolded by the teacher. Right? They always, I, I see this with my late teacher. All those students who always can get scolded, get scolded, right? They get, they get reprimanded, everything. I notice that these will all become good students later. They'll become good teachers later. They become good, good teachers. The only exception was me. I always get scolded, but I didn't become good. I didn't become a good teacher. But then you always get scolded, you always get scolded. It helps. So that. All right. So being slow is will have a long term, provided you're willing to work hard. Why is it that good students sometimes become the worst of teachers? Because they are, they got it. So they 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 work hard, yes, but at the same time, they have natural, they, 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 they do not quite understand how people do not understand because they already can understand. So they become very impatient when they're supposed to teach. They don't have to wait to become teachers. When they have to teach their peers, right? You don't understand, is it? I don't know how many times I'm supposed to. Sometimes they become impatient. Why? Because they, when they got it, it was easy. It was easy when they got it. Ah, so all this us. All right, that's why, it's, that's why the prophet gives a condition. The best amongst you are those who teach and learn. Because when you learn, when you when you learn, you go through the rigors of learning, only then can you appreciate yourself. You appreciate it when you become a when you become a teacher. Ah, okay. Hmm. So it's always good. And, 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 and you know, and one important, important thing, if you are gonna be if you become a teacher, always make sure that you are still a student. Important lesson. If you are to become a teacher, no matter how great you are as a teacher, you become a sheikh, Sheikhul Kabir. The big sheikh, I mean, not size, but the sheikh, 
right? Become popular, whatsoever. You still must be a humble student to a teacher. And I notice all my teachers, they have, all my teachers, they are students, fearful students of their teachers. No, my late teacher, my late teacher was very fierce, old school fierce. Almarhum K. Kosim. Wow, fierce. We were very fierce, all right? But there was my 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 mom used to tell me there was one instance whereby he was attending a was there was a funeral, there was a funeral, and then my my wife my wife talked to my uh, late teacher's wife, right? They used to call her nyai nyai, all right? Says no no, why is kiai kiai downstairs? Why is kiai downstairs? Why is he kiai? Why is he not upstairs? Like they're attending to the is at the kampung is at the is a kampung house. So at the, at the, 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 our teacher was at the at, was at the bottom of the house, not at the top, not inside the house to 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 go inside there. He says, "Oh, his teacher is inside the house. He he won't dare go inside. His teacher is inside the house. His teacher is Kiai Shukur. Brother Erwan, you stay at Teban. Brother Teban, Masjid Hasana was founded by him. Kiai Shukur. And that was my teacher. That's why I took the offer to teach in that mosque because that was my teacher's teacher's mosque. So he his teacher was upstairs inside there. Says he doesn't dare. And I said, my teacher is already so fierce." It's already so fierce, and then he he doesn't want to be, he doesn't there. All right, uh, they have so much decorum, so much more of respect for their teachers. All right, so that's why I always, I always, always, it's always a good first, first front, front, front seat ticket to see your teacher serve his teacher. It's a good learning point. When you see your teacher at the service of his teacher, then you learn adapt. Then you see it for yourself, oh, mashallah, before they, this is how they are before their teachers, and you start to see how bad you are before your teachers. Hey, Sheikh, how are you? Kepak, kepak, kepak. <laughs> you do, you're not thinking of Sheikh like a Sheikh. You're thinking of Sheikh like a celebrity. <laughs> Sheikh, Sheikh, selfie, wifi, wifi, wifi. <laughs> that's not your Sheikh. All right? Uh, that's your artist. All right? Uh, you make your Sheikh into your artist. Sheikh, wifi, wifi together, wifi. All right? Never attend the class for 10 years and after that wifi. All right? Mm. <laughs> All right? Please strive to be muta'alim. Mut All right? To be a seeker of knowledge. Uh, All right? But Muhibin is good enough. Okay, now. Not the messenger of Allah says, Verily, Allah looks not to your outward appearances, nor to your actions, but He looks to your hearts and your intentions. So make sure that we actually watch, watch this. And the way, one way to watch is to watch how this, inter, what is inside will translate into the outside. All right? So make sure that, one way to, to see an indication of your inside, whether your inside is good, is pure, is how you treat people. How you treat people around you, how you stand before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. All right, so always be always be contemplating about yourself. If you wanted to know the different states of the hearts, then look into the Ehya Ulumidin and my other works. Ah, uh, this is what he says. This science is far. This science is far too It's obligatory to what the art of cleansing or purifying yourself is is obligatory. As much as aqidah is obligatory and fiqh, doing learning how to do ibadah, doing true worship is is obligatory. Cleansing your heart is obligatory as well. Because that determines acceptance. That determines acceptance. All right? And other disciplines are fardu kifaya. Obligatory for some individuals in the community. All right? What is fardu kifaya? Those knowledge that at least one member of the community has to endeavor in, has to expertise in, has to serve in. All right? Mm. So what you are learning in schools now is fardu kifaya. Which is good. Because it is it's for the communal good. And the Muslim must always serve to provide for the communal good of the world. Okay? Mm. So do not always think that oh, secondary school knowledge is, is not important. It's no, it's important. All right. Uh, national school knowledge is important. Why? Because it is used as a means for you to provide and to serve the community. Except to the extent that it facilitates performance of the obligatory duties enjoined by Allah the Exalted, and He will give you a success in achieving that knowledge. So he's trying to say that no, you need Ayyuhal Walad. Do not stop here. So it's hope that after you learn Ayyuhal Walad, look for other classes elsewhere. Does that have to be a class? No, you should be like, you should be this. Oh, I finish this book. I will look, wow, what other works of Imam Ghazali can I attend? I attend. All right, attend other classes, books, reading by of Imam Ghazali or, 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 or the likes of it. All right, so you start to, to, to learn more. But it's a platform. Every completion of a book is a platform for you to look out for other gardens of knowledge for you to further learn from. It's supposed to have that effect. All right, it's like every book that you complete, every time you complete reading, reading a book or a lesson, all right, it is like a launch pad. Right, it is like a it is like a launch pad for you to. It's like an appetizer for the more main course to come. So every new book, no matter how thick, is like an appetizer. All right, 
And then when you just thought if you read another book, you think it's the main cause. No, oh, there's it's still an appetizer to a bigger book. So books itself, they have multiple levels to it. All right. Mm. Last part, 24th council is dua. Before we look, read the dua, there's some parts that he mentioned. Mm. My dear son, remember him. My dear son, I have written in this chapter the answer to your request. So you should act accordingly. So again, important adapt. If you ask a question, the person answers, acknowledge, and I try to act upon the answer. And, and do not to forget, do not forget to mention me in your most righteous dua, in your most righteous dua. So this is a good sunnah. Right? This is a good sunnah. This is a good adab that you always ask someone to make dua for you. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, he always asks, he always asks the small kids to make dua for him. He asks the children to make dua for him. Because their hearts are pure. He always asks the children to make dua for him. Ustaz, how can you make a children dua? Because the children, they don't know how to, they can't, they don't know how to recite dua. Well, all right, you can actually, one is you can ask them to make dua for you. Second is that you can recite the dua and ask them to say amin. All right? So make, ask people to make dua for you. Always ask people to make dua for, for you. Mm. Now, so, what constitutes blessed knowledge? So as I close this one, uh, just, just taking from this, from Imam Ghazali, what constitutes blessed knowledge? All right. The most blessed knowledge is to always act upon your teacher's teaching. All right. Whatever your teacher teach, have the intention, Ya Allah, give me the strength to practice it. Even though when you're listening, oh, heavy, uh, berat, uh, cannot. Uh, ya Allah, give me the strength to perform this. At a time where you deem best. It might not be now. You might not appreciate your teacher's knowledge now. You might, oh, very hard. You might not do it now. Later. Okay? Second, alright, to get better knowledge, always make dua for your teachers. Always make dua for your teachers along with a dua for your parents. Alright, this is, this is the advice of, of, my, of my teacher, Ustaz Afandi Ahmad. He says, right, you make dua, alright, if you, to, to, be, uh, instead of, to be always in a state of blessing, always make dua for your teachers. Always make dua for your, for your teachers. Okay. And to make dua for this also entails the fact that you actually have a lot of respect for them. Right? So, teachers, uh, scholars say teachers are like your spiritual parents. Right? Uh, they are like your spiritual parents because they watch, parents watch over your, your whole being. Right? Teachers also watch over your spirituality and your, and your knowledge development. Okay? So, always make dua for them. Never leave, never leave, never leave a, 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 a prayer without making dua for your parents and also making a prayer for your, for, for your, for your teachers. Okay, make dua for them. All right. And then uh, one of my other teachers, he says, mention them. Mention them in two, two ways. One is one is when you act upon their knowledge. The other way to mention is that when you teach. So when you happen to find myself, I teach, you always say, Why are you mentioning? Why are you always mentioning your teacher's name? One is to one is to tell you that the knowledge that I have is because of the blessings of my teachers. Right? When I wanted to teach, I always asked my teachers for, 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 for permission to teach. Right? I don't teach because I want to teach. No, I, my teacher gave me permission to teach. Right? So, it's, so when I mention them, it's me, all right, it's me in a way making dua for them. And it's me reminding myself that it's important. Right? It's important for, for it's reminding myself that the knowledge I have is not because of my own abilities. It's because my teacher's dua and my teacher's knowledge. Right? And it's, it's also to also encourage us to always seek to have teachers in our life. At every stage, anything you do, for, even for a worldly matter, make sure that you have a teacher. To selfless to self learn is a, is the add on step, but the foundation must be based on the teacher. I was going for for a massage in in JB. This uh, with a blind man. Uh, he's a good. He's a, he's, he's quite renowned. He himself he says that I can massage not by trial and error. Some people they massage for trial and error. They learn. They just you know, not people. They break people. How many people's bones they are broken? But they, he has a teacher as well. He says, everything you do, you must have a teacher. Because knowledge is based on two things. The learner and the teacher. It's based on those two things. Alright? So these are the things. As for the dua, which you ask me to teach you, you will find it among the supplications of the, of the siha, or of the sahih, questions of hadith. Read this dua different times, and especially after your prayer. So we will end today. I will recite dua, alright, in English here, and then we will all amin, and then we will, and shall end the lesson today. All right. If you have questions, yeah, okay. Uh, if you have questions, okay, before we go into dua, I will take questions. Inshallah, we have time. You have questions to ask. Today is the last time you, some, some of you will be seeing me. Okay. Mm.
Salam Ustaz, referring to what was mentioned. Oh, I have some questions. At last part of previous chapter, I may ask, is there ranking of knowledge in terms of religious and secular, e.g. medical information and technology? I've learned, heard that certain knowledge of such, such uh, that certain knowledge such as astrology has have its superiority. Okay. Of course, knowledge has its levels. So that's why Farduain, scholars say that Farduain is the highest level. The knowledge of knowing Allah SWT and his attributes. Knowing about, uh, knowing how to worship Allah. Knowing, all right, uh, cleansing ourselves so that we can better worship Allah. These are all Farduain. So it's fiqh, uh, akhidah, uh, tasawuf, akhlaq. All these are higher level. These are the, these are the compulsory obligatory knowledge. This is the highest level. All right. Having said that, it does not mean that other levels is, is, is not important. Some people will say this is important, it's not important. No, 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 no. This is strong categorization. All knowledge is beneficial, all knowledge is important. It's just that they have different varying degrees of importance. All right. All food is good, but certain food is more, is better than others. All right. So within the um, academic knowledge or secular knowledge, as you will call it, all right, medical information technology, okay, they also have their own levels. So, uh, uh, Sister Kylie says this about astrology. All right, how about astrology? So, the knowledge, so how important the knowledge is, is dependent. So, secular knowledge, for example, medicine. All right, it's considered to be of higher level than some, most of other knowledge. Why? Because of the nature of medicine, it contributes. The level of contribution it provides to a person. It saves a person's life. It makes a person better. It provides the bridge for a person to become better in his relationship with Allah SWT. It, be it becomes that. So, it becomes important. Another level to measure important is that how is that knowledge? For example, if you're talking about astrology and you start to study nature, you start to study uh, to st st study how environment functions. When you study that and then when you study that, it takes you closer to Allah SWT, the more chances of you getting closer to Allah SWT by that knowledge, that knowledge becomes important as well. So it's actually dependent, the importance of a particular knowledge is dependent on how much of contribution it helps to uh, save or preserve the infrastructure of a, of a community and also how much of that knowledge actually takes you closer to Allah Taala. Okay, so for example, if I become a teacher, if I teach, if I teach academic, so I teach history. From my study of history, all right, for, for me becoming a teacher, I can educate the character of students. For me teaching history, I, the students are made aware of realities of the world and henceforth, then that becomes beneficial knowledge to them and that takes the knowledge of history higher. All right, so it's dependent on how much it contributes to the betterment of a community and how much it takes the People that learns it closer to the creator. Okay. Mm. Next question. Okay. Oh, long, long question. Okay, about the statement. Okay, about the statement that to pursue knowledge, not to accumulate them, but to put the knowledge into action. But is it true that sometimes the knowledge you currently have learned might not yet be able to immediately translate into action? All right, until certain state or accumulation or might be the solution for future problems encountered or another person problem. But not all this for your own current problem for your currently seek solution. So is it true that the objective of pursuing knowledge is to be closer to Allah, hence not all this to seek knowledge for solution or answer, but for so that Allah will make your heart stronger in taking the tribulation from shaitan whisper and hence keep us to stay in a state of... Is this part of what you refer to as cleanse your heart? Okay, there's many things, there's many facets to this question. Now, the first thing is that, yes, first thing you must acknowledge, question, I say knowledge accumulation. Do not, so I clarified just now, I said that when you seek knowledge, do not make the intention to merely accumulate. Make the intention to act upon it. But you must also be aware eh, that when you act upon certain knowledge, some knowledge is not yet good to be acted upon. For example, simple, not yet ready to be acted upon. You learn about Hajj. You learn about Hajj. All right? Hajj, performing of the Hajj. All right? Uh, and, and henceforth. But then, do you, can you act upon it or not? No. Why? Because you have not received the letter to go for Hajj. Or the Hajj season has not started. So that, can, that has to that has to wait. Alright? That has to that has to wait. Okay? And um, another form of knowledge. So knowledge is also not something that is also activated, not also because of the fact that you activate it consciously. For example, I learned about the importance of praying sunnah prayers. So of the rawatid prayers. So I act upon it. So I intend it. Sometimes a knowledge is activated because of circumstances that calls for you to activate it. So for example, you are faced with a tribulation or shaitan whispers to you. All right? ah, this will call you to activate knowledge. Sometimes you don't, you don't, you don't plan for tribulations. Right? But tribulations happen. For example, you go to work and find out that your, your bags are packed and then you are ready to go. What? You, are, you have been, you have been, you have been uh, sacked. 
All right, uh, you have been retrenched. So you go to work, you find that you have been retrenched. You are not needed anymore. That was something that you didn't plan for, but activating knowledge. Therefore, you have learned about the virtue of being patient, and now you activate it. All right, now you activate it. So that is part of seeking knowledge, so that you are also prepared to react when things that are extraordinary happens to you, things that are beyond you starts to happen to you. All right. Also, this is also part of, yes, this is part of cleansing your heart. So, making sure that your heart reacts accordingly. So, that it's always purified. What's the purpose of it? So, that you are always in a state of good, uh, having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's always a hikmah at the end of it. Alright? The devil whispers to you. The devil doesn't have a planned time to whisper to you. The devil will always whisper to you in the most least, least expected manner. When you are prepared, Ramadan, you are prepared. No, Ramadan, I'm prepared for the, to, to, to address the devil. Alright? So, you are always tip top in Ramadan. The devil doesn't disturb you in Ramadan. All right, you are prepared. You go for Hajj. Ah, see, give you the example of Hajj so that it entices you. All right, you go for Hajj. You go for Hajj. You prepare. You go for the talk. The, the star says, "Beware, the devil will treat you in Makkah and Madinah." The devil doesn't treat you in Makkah and Madinah. Trust me. In Makkah and Madinah, you go for tawaf. You always watch it. You are very careful. Oh, don't step on people's toes. You are very careful when you do tawaf. No problem. The, 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 the devil doesn't disturb you in Madinah also. Why? When you go to Rauda, you don't rush in. You watch. Wow, mashallah. So, when does the devil disturb you? The devil disturbs you at Jeddah. At the international, Jeddah International Airport. When you're queuing up and then you meet the immigration officer. Move there. Say there, say there. Yeah, yeah. Habib, habib. Yallah, yallah, yallah. They move you to one row. Then we go to that row, they close the counter. Yallah, move to this row. This is when they test you. It's not in Makkah Marina, Ustaz, sorry. It's in Jeddah. Jeddah is when they test you. Oh, it's not just at Jeddah. They test you at Changi. Changi? Yes. Oh, you, 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 bought, you got Zamzam -zam water. That water, Zamzam. -zam. You reach Changi Airport. You wait waiting at the conveyor belt. All the energies have their bags. They have their Zamzam. -zam. Your company, no Zamzam -zam comes out. You are tested in Changi Airport. Your Zamzam -zam doesn't come out. And you're, 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 you start to go zoom zoom. Alright, uh, that's a challenge. So do you have to, you have to, knowledge will prepare, this is when it's unexpected. That's when you know whether you're knowledgeable or not. You know, you know a knowledgeable person in, the, in at times when the knowledge, when the knowledge is put to task least expectedly. Now I'm talking about patience. Talking about patience doesn't make me knowledgeable yet. You want to see who starts Hafiz? See if he's but if he goes to if he travels to Turkey, if his luggage doesn't come out at Istanbul. Luggage doesn't come out. It ends up in Karachi. See my reaction. If I'm calm and composed, I'm knowledgeable. That's what Allah says, in nama yashamini ibadihi al-ulama. Alright? Ah, so you want to, that's why the Prophet is the most knowledgeable of all knowledge. Knowledgeable. Why? The Prophet Salam, in all circumstances, his knowledge takes care of him. Right? Ah, okay, I hope that answered your question. Right? Mm. Oh, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a sharing here. All right, yeah, there's Ustaz Mokhtar sharing. Okay, good. You can follow up on this one. Mm. Okay. All right. There's Ustaz Mokhtar sharing. Ustaz, 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 uh, Ustaz Mokhtar, uh, he, he teaches, yeah, he likes, he teaches text. Or he, he, you can know, feel free. It's in English. Ustaz Mokhtar's classes are in English. You can feel free to attend his classes as well. All right. Yeah. Fun fact about Ustaz Mokhtar. Ustaz Mokhtar and I were in the same company for NS last time. All right. But of course, he takes a more exalted, he's more exalted in the sense that he's more serious about seeking knowledge as I am. All right. Uh, so uh, I, that's why I remember him more than he remembers me. All right. Mm, I'm quite a forgettable figure or remember for the wrong reasons in my NS days. <laughs> All right. Any other, any other questions? Okay. If you don't have the solution yet, is it better not to point out a problem? Oh, this is quite, this is quite uh, uh, vague yet. It, if you don't have the solution yet, is it better not to point out a problem? Uh, do you have a... Uh, okay, if you don't have the solution yet, it's better not to point out a problem. Uh, no. So, sometimes, it's not that you don't want to... You point it out. Sometimes the problem appears. It's not that you point it out, you know. Sometimes the problem is there. Uh, of course, if... if do not make a mountain of a molehill. It's a different thing. So in the sense that... It's not... In fact, sometimes it's not a problem, but you problematize it. That's different. But sometimes, if you sometimes the reality is such that it's, it, it, it is it is the problem is not what you uh, point out, but it is a problem. All right, it is not what it is. It is a problem whether you like it or not. Nah, because problems are not always. That's why it's called a problem. 
it is not really up to us to determine if it's a problem, but the way it manifests itself is problematic. All right? Uh, it's just the very how you want to categorize it. I always put it as comfort level. All right? Is it really a problem or is it a discomfort? Is it a difficulty or is it a discomfort? Uh, that's a problem. A problem has many range. All right? So if I take by your uh, brother, brother Zaid's uh, good question here, which is a very thought-provoking uh, issue, uh, point he raised here, it can be, it can be that if it's if you have the solution, is it better not to point out a problem? It depends on the circumstances. All right, it be, it, it, it it depends on the circumstances. I can't think of one off the back of my head now, but uh, it really depends also on the severity of the of the problem itself. Some problems you need to point it out. Right? Sometimes, for example, you have don't you don't have a cure for this. You don't have a cure for this ailment. You don't have you don't have you don't have a cure for this illness. You don't have a remedy for this illness, but you know. All right, but you know that you need to highlight it still to the patient so that the patient can still take measures to not worsen it. There's no remedy for this. For example, your particular disease has no ailment. There's no known medical condition to save that person. But you still need to point out the problem. Why? So that the person does not worsen the state of his problem because he's not told about it. Uh, so I hope that, that settles your, your question. All right? Okay? MashaAllah. Okay? Um... So it, it was sparked by what you said about the Sunnah being to offer a model, all right? Uh, so that's why I said good about, about being able to offer a model. The truth is that uh, when I talk about model at all levels, right? At all the levels, uh, there's a problem actually that we don't have a model for all this. The, 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 the problem is there at every level, house, at, at, at a domestic level, at house level, at our household level, at our work level, there's always a problem to each, to address. At administrative level, governance level, uh, in certain, uh, there's a need for, there's a problem that calls for our addressing of it. All right. So there needs to be a, even though we can't come up with a comprehensive model, do we need to have a model for part of that problem as well, at least. All right. Uh, so, if, for example, in another part of the world, or right, in the Middle East and a relationship crisis, all right, there needs to be, you can't address the whole, it's a big issue that has been accumulated over the years. There needs to be some model that, that can address part of it as well. It's like your workplace. We have an issue with the management, all right? To change the management is quite a drastic measure. There's a lot of things that you have to stand up with at your level. So at your, it's at, at your own department level or your sub-department level, at your own committee level, some reforms can be made, all right? That slowly can, can have a, a ripple effect on changing at other parts of the workplace, all right? Hope that helps. Okay, mashallah. Thank you for the session today. I will end with the du'a. We shall reset the du'a together from the book. A'udhu billah. من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أو الله I ask of you complete blessings lasting protection from sin comprehensive mercy acquisition of well being in this world and in the next the best provision the happiest life the most complete favor the most generous blessing the sweetest grace and the closest gentleness أو الله be for us and not against us O oh Allah, seal our lives with happiness and good fortune. Realize our aspirations accompanied with further increase. Combine our mornings and evenings with safety and make your compassion our return and our last resort and pour the best of your forgiveness over our sins and favor us with the reform of our defects. Make piety our provision and grant us interpretative judgment in your religion and make us depend on you and have confidence only in you. O oh Allah, make us firm on the path of steadfastness and safeguard us in this world from matters that will bring shame on the day of judgment. Enlighten for us the burden of our sins and grant us lives of the righteous and protect us from the evil of the evil ones. Save our necks and the necks of our fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters from the fire of hell by your compassion. O oh, power, oh, most powerful one, most forgiving, most generous, concealing of our faults. O oh, you, most knowledgeable, most overwhelming, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, by your mercy, O oh most merciful of the merciful, O oh first before the first, last after the last, O oh possessor of strength, everlasting compassion to the destitute, most compassionate of those who are compassionate. There is no God but you. Glory be to you. Verily, I am of the wrongdoers. And may Allah bless our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all his followers and companions. All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord and cherisher of all the worlds. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Wa sallillahumma ala khairi khalqihi wa nuri arshihi. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajman. Alhamdulillah bil alamin. Thank you on behalf of Ehsan Institute for 
uh, this program for joining us for this program. I hope it has been of benefit to you. Inshallah, look out for us for our programs for next year, uh, for our ongoing programs for for next year, and may it be of benefit. May, may you continue to follow our programs. All right, and thank you. And if there's any inadequacy or shortcomings from my part in sharing, it's all coming from my inadequacies and incapacity. All right, may Allah Taala strengthen me and make me a better presenter of knowledge to you all. All right, all good things come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and all weaknesses come from my inadequacies. So, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi. Thank you very much, Ustaz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Shalom. Wassalam. Thank you, Ustaz. Thank you. Thank you.